Right, so now we're going to do a sourdough. Now, I'm sure you're aware and you're probably excited and maybe you've done it before, but this is just a really simple sourdough recipe. Sourdough generally is quite simple. You know, you're starting with a natural ingredient of flour and water. So why change it up? Why add too much to it? So here's our base. Here's our standard sourdough. So we've got in here 330 grams of white flour. And to that, we're going to add our water, which is 220 grams. Then we're going to add our salt, which is 8 grams. Okay, give that a whisk. Almost there. And then we add our sourdough over here, and we're going to add 100 grams, which is quite a strong, it's quite a high amount for a sourdough. It's about 30% uh, if I'm right. Brilliant. Now we're adding it to the water just because it's easier if you add it to. Uh, there if it gets if you add too much it's hard to take out and things like that so that's the best way then we're gonna add the water to the flour the flour to the water and we can start mixing so these are overnight breads by allowing the sourdough to ferment overnight in the fridge, um, it's going to bring out so much more flavour. Now you can make it straight away, you can do you know, straight dough, do the dough, leave it to rest for um, an hour, give it a fold, leave it to rest for another hour, um, shape, improve, and you know, that, that'll work and I did do that way for a long time when I had my bakery. Um, but Putting it in the fridge gives you a little bit more control to fit it kind of around your day-to-day -day life. So, for example, you can, if you wanted to have this tomorrow, you could make the dough in the evening, leave it in the fridge overnight as a bulk ferment, and then take it out in the morning, shape it, divide it if you've got a few in, few dough sizes, um, allow it to prove and then bake it in the afternoon or you could allow it to ferment for a couple of hours um, with a fold halfway through and then shape put in the fridge overnight and then that way your bread would slowly prove ready for the morning you could of course put less sourdough in and let it prove overnight in the air and that might give you a, a a bake that's ready at the right time bear in mind you've got to be up to put the oven to heat up on beforehand as well um, so yeah there's loads of options there's little ways you can change it if you're bulk fermenting as in you've got more of it before you divide it into pieces then that will ferment at a higher rate than um, individual pieces but it will probably add in more flavour as well because of the, the mass effect is what it's called. Now the mass effect, that works in a way that where you've got a small amount of something in one speck of uh, flour. So remember it's a natural product, there's different things that are inhibiting its flavour such as a, a touch of damson or um, a bit of wheat that was grown next to a rosemary bush or something like that. Um, and that will all impact the, the flavour. And if you have a bigger batch of dough, this tiny little organism or different flavour, aroma, will get amplified throughout the whole dough to a greater extent. So when you've got maybe hundreds and thousands of these slightly, slightly little aromas, they all add up and they create more aromatic bread as a whole. 
if you bulk fermenting in a bigger range. So that's why sometimes you'll find that you can't match uh, bigger bakeries for flavour in some regards. You know, maybe it's missing that final nine, maybe it's a 9.5 and you're trying to get to 9.6 <laughs> on the ratings. Uh, and that could be the difference, the fact that it's in uh, larger quantities. This also works, the mass effect also works with yeast, whereas a small amount of yeast will work harder in a bigger amount of dough to get it going. It takes a while to get going and then it becomes stronger, more resilient, and it, sh and it actually works more actively in a large amount of dough. Of course here we are only doing generally one, maybe two or three loaves at a time, um, but it, it does make sense to have this time before you do the final proof to allow the dough to develop its flavour, its strength and its protein capabilities. This dough is getting nice and strong now, really nice consistency. And that's our seven minutes up. So now we're going to knead it fast. We're just going to do it straight away. I had cold water. It's got to be nice. We're just going to do it straight away. So now this beautiful little dough is going to sit in the fridge in its bowl overnight, covered. But what we're going to do is we're going to do some stretch and folds as well. So that means f stretching and folding it, we want to do it every four hours. So that might mean a bit of a late night, a little bit of a trip to the toilet to do it in the middle of the night, and uh, one, one more last one in the morning. So that will just give it a bit more strength. It's not necessary. It doesn't mean that it's going to fall apart if you don't, but it just will give you a little bit more strength into the day. Okay. I'll see you in the next video. Okay, but it doesn't stop there. We're gonna try and do another sourdough as well. So, you may have heard the expression no need bread. Now, this is a no need sourdough. It kind of came about maybe 10 years ago, um, and it really, really grew in popularity um, pretty quickly, and it gives a completely different sort of texture to standard sourdough. It's lighter and fluffier and it's less kind of sourdoughy. Um, you can do it with other breads as well. I've seen people try that but I mean with the sourdough is the only real bread that the no knead technique really works I believe. So we're going to do exactly the same thing as what we did with the other bread and then we can compare the difference and uh, I'll show you how we do it. So basically we've done exactly the same thing, 220 of cold water. We're going to add the 100 grams of sourdough, and it's the same sourdough, um, straight after the other one, so it's going to be the same level of um, intensity, of aroma, of flavour. Provided we've got 100 grams in here. Then we've got our flour, our 330 grams of flour, so then we just add our flour to the water. <laughs> Somewhere in here is the, uh, there we go. Um, yeah, and we're just gonna no need need for a second. Okay, that is it. No kneading, just a light mix, incorporate it all together, and in the bowl it goes. Again, cover it, put it in the fridge, we'll follow exactly the same process as the other sourdough and we'll have a look at them in the morning and see how they come out. Okay, so overnight I gave it a turn four hours afterwards and then another four hours in the middle of the night um, just to stretch and fold quickly on the table. Didn't have my eyes open that well, but hey, it was worth it. Um, as I said, it's not critical, it doesn't mean that your bread will be a disaster if you don't. It just add a little bit of extra strength to it. So first of all, we're going to do the let's start off with this one. This is the one that we needed. So we're going to take it out on the table and fold it that way, that way, that way, that way, 
and that way, one more time, there, and it's into a ball. We're just going to cup it and bring our hands back. If you didn't catch that, I'll bring the camera closer so you can see the second one. So, there you have it. And then we're just going to leave that to rest for five, five to ten minutes, just to allow it to relax a little bit. And so that when we do it again, we'll have a lot of the air bubbles will be pushed out. So, next up, we're going to start with the one that we didn't need, the no need one. So here, take it out, lay it on the table, and again, fold, turn, fold, 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 just taking the longest side each side, each time we take the longest one and we just fold it in. We can use our thumb with our other hand just to push it over like that into a ball. We can do one more if you want. There you go. Right, so that's like that. Then we're just going to cup it, bring it towards us. Dust in a flower and lay it down there. So we'll leave these both for about five minutes just to relax a little bit and then we will then shape them into our basket. But let's prepare our basket first of all. Here we're using bannetons. Um, this is a really, really standard one. You can get another type made from brot form, um, which is like a compressed cardboard sort of thing. Um, they're pretty cool, but if they get wet, you get a sticky dough in it, it's really, really hard to clean. Whereas these, you can just get a dough scraper around the outside and scrape each crevice to bring out the, bring out the um, intonation that you'll get when this is proven. Now, you don't have to use it like this, you can get covers for them and they really don't cost much, maybe a pound or something like that and they just line the outside um, and it stops the indentation touching quite so much. We have got another solution um, if you don't want one of these um, and you want to save a little bit of money and um, so check out the rosemary bread video because that's going to reveal another type that you can use. So. To prepare this, we need to dust it with flour. There is a way that you could potentially spray the basket on the inside if you struggle with this. Um, and it's kind of worth doing that the first time you use it, just to weather it in and make sure there's plenty of flour in there. Because without a layer stuck to it, then it, they do tend to stick. So, it's always better, especially when you're first starting and you're getting confidence, to put a little bit too much as opposed to a little bit too little. It is kind of a little bit nicer without it, but the worst thing you can do is have it when you spent all this time making this perfect bread, amazing dough, and it sticks because you haven't put enough flour in it. So I've put a layer of flour there, a layer of semolina for um, added sort of grit, and then another layer of flour. So that will just sit like that. And we take this one, we do exactly the same. This is a little bit of a cleaner one already. So just lightly dusting it in like that. Have it. So, give these another couple of minutes. Um, I'm just gonna sc scrape the table and we'll start molding these. Okay, so the table has been cleared. Now we're going to prepare our dough. So this one is the one that we needed. It feels a little bit firmer. So again, same thing again. Fold over and in. And we pull towards this. And if it's a little bit firm, then just push it in with your fingers a little bit, just at the bottom there. Okay, that's it. All we do now is take our seam side up, and we pop that into the basket. Now again with this one, same thing again. Try and push that extra flour off. Probably overflowered the surface there. Okay, so we're just pushing it out to flatten it. And then same thing again, fold towards, again. Again, 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 
one more there. Okay, and then pull that towards us. And for, because it's quite a firm and it's a cold dough, kind of working to push it like that and then push it in, push it like that with the fingertips and then in like that with the palm, just to stop it going too oblongy. And so that's it. This one again goes in here like that. And so we know which is which, I'm just gonna put the bag on top like that. So I know that that one is the no need one. So here we have it, we have one here and one here. We're gonna allow those to prove. We're gonna pop the oven on, it will take. Okay, so it is now about seven, eight hours later and the bread has nicely risen. So we're going to pop it onto our peel. Now as I've got two loaves in this bake, I'm going to try and put it on the edge of the peel. We just turn it over, throw it on. Okay, and then, so that's the kneaded one. This is the no need. Turn it on the bottom there. That's come, and they both come out quite nicely. So no need on the right. And actually, if you look at them, you can kind of see this one's got a little bit more height, whereas that one's a little bit more yeah, misshapen. Interesting, that one feels more moist and that one feels a little bit drier. So, we will allow that to just sit there for about 10 minutes. That will just make sure gravity is doing its thing to pull the weight down in the right place um, and that the surface can skin up just a little bit. Um, so it's better for cutting. So, I'm just gonna wait 10 minutes and then we'll come back and make our cuts. Okay, so these little beauties have had enough time to rest, but now we're gonna make our cuts. So, ooh, 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 gets, gets touchy now. Okay, one, two, three, ooh, okay. Could have caught it there, but but it is what it is, isn't it? Okay, next one. I'm gonna do exactly the same to try and test these bad boys out. One, two, three. Beautiful. <laughs> you can actually see in the hole there, uh, maybe. Uh, okay, let's see that. This little beauty is going to go in right in the corner. Over there. Get it in there. Okay. Let's hope that's on the stone. And this little beauty is going to go in there. Then we're going to chuck our water in. Nice amount of steam. Drop the temperature down to 220. Give it a sound size. Hopefully they'll come up really good. I'm looking forward to seeing how they get on. Again, most like most bread, we're looking at about 35 minutes. A little bit longer if we want a dark crust. But with these ones, we will probably try and pull the temperature down to about 200 for the last 10 minutes, just to make sure the core gets baked really nicely. Okay, as you can see, our breads have come up nicely. I'm really loving how the cuts have opened up just that little bit. That was a perfect proof for these loaves. Um, so yeah, exciting stuff. That's 25 almost minutes in. So we will give these another five minutes and then we'll have a look at the color and then maybe reduce the oven setting down. And here we have our beautiful sourdoughs. There's a nice coloration on them. <laughs> I'm really liking these. So what we'll do is we'll then cut these up and then we'll talk about which one was better than no need and the needed.
Okay, so now is testing time. Our bread has uh, cooled. It's the next day now, so I want to test the difference and see which one do I prefer, the no need or the need. So, uh, here's what it's going with, a nice little plowman's. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I think I've forgotten which one's which. We'll find out. This one here, to me, resembles the needed. So let's cut slice. It's a thick crust, strong, crunchy, nice open texture. That's perfect for a sourdough. Now, let's try the other one. It's got more, slightly more volume in. Pretty much the same. Yeah, this is the no need. Okay, the difference is if you push the crust, they look almost identical. The top one has got um, probably a slightly more definition. If when you look around the crumb there, you can see um, a bit more structure. Whereas this one's a little bit more wavy, so it gets right around the crust. Um, there's some smaller bubbles uh, in here, and then there's some bigger ones as well. So, yeah, a nice combination. But when you push this, it feels softer. It's got more bounce. So, let's try it out. That was no need. That was no need, that was need. I tell you what, I'll eat it and I'll let you know what I think afterwards. Okay guys, that was absolutely delicious. And I'm really torn between the two. There was really a lot of similarities, but the Noni just won it. Um, you can see that it's got a slightly lighter crumb, slightly just very, very hard to see. Top one has got a slightly lighter crumb and it kind of tastes a little bit more lighter, a little bit more refreshing and kind of like the crust to the crumb contrast really is a bit of a bigger difference. So that's why I think there's just a little bit more flavour in the no need way. So that is what we're going to go for next time. No need sourdough, it's less work and actually it tastes delicious.